Number 10, the big fin squid. This deep sea creature will probably be in your nightmares tonight. Looking like a mix between spaghetti and the hair I pulled out of my shower drain this morning, this is the big fin squid. This creature was discovered only about 20 years ago and was first mainly noticed when a group of researchers had been diving to a shipwreck and seen the terrifying squid instead. It's known to live miles beneath the water's surface and seems to just float around in the water. They can grow around 6 meters long, with most of that being in its tentacles and arms, which scientists really don't understand. As the squid appears to just drift around, they're not really sure how it actually uses its tentacles. One thing they do know however is that these spaghetti noodles have microscopic suckers on them which scientists theorize they use to catch prey that bump into them and they then drag their meal along the sea floor. Number 9. The Immortal Jellyfish If any of you out there are planning on discovering how to live forever, the so called immortal jellyfish may be your ticket to success. When the jellyfish eggs hatch, they grow to full size in just a few weeks, but they don't grow very large. The average size of one of these creatures is only a about the size of your pinky nail. So what makes these tiny little guys unique from all the other species of jellyfish out there? Whenever they become damaged or even begin to starve, they reverse back in the developmental process. If you think about the life cycle of a frog that you probably studied in school, they go backwards in this cycle, reverting back to their early stage of a polyp. They can then grow up again, genetically identical to the jellyfish that it used to be, or still is. They can also create clones of themselves, so while one may die, that same creature might still be floating around somewhere. Scientists are desperately looking into this process and how they do it, as they want to look into the medical applications of the jellyfish's abilities. Number 8. The Yeti Crab this fuzzy looking crab was only recently discovered in the mid 2000s and it's got scientists baffled. They were discovered just south of Easter Island and appear to thrive around hydrothermal vents underwater. It's believed that they eat mollusks around the vents and also appear to grow bacteria on their arms by holding them over top of it so that they can then eat the bacteria later. These animals are also pretty stuck where they are. They are virtually blind due to their deep sea location and only seem to be able to live within very close proximity to the vents. If they wander even just a few meters away from the area, they're highly likely to die. Because of this, the yeti crabs are typically seen hanging out in massive piles, sometimes up to 600 crabs per square meter, making pictures of these groups of crabs a little unsettling to look at. Not much is known about these guys yet, so it might be a while before we get some solid answers about just how they came to evolve to survive next to these hydrothermal vents. Number 7. Rangomorph this next one probably isn't one you've ever heard about or seen when you've been walking around. That's because this is a fossil that scientists are working hard to try and understand. It's referred to as an Ediacaran and has had researchers confused for years. So here's what we do know about this prehistoric creature. They were largely immobile and could grow to sizes larger than humans. It's especially unique as it's one of the first large multicellular organisms that seem to exist before the first real animals ever evolved. A scan of the fossils allowed researchers to look into the physical makeup of this creature. It had strange internal structures, including its cone-shaped central trunk and the six fern-like fronds extending out from it to form a primitive kind of skeleton. There's still a lot to do to figure out just what exactly this creature was, and it's hard to figure out as it disappeared an estimated 500 140 million years ago. Number 6. Crows. I know what you're thinking. Crows? Yes. Crows. While they may seem like simple avians that you hear squawking away during the day, there's a lot to these birds that scientists don't really seem to understand. The main one being that these guys are mean. Some people know that crows are extremely smart and can be trained to do tasks, as well as having built in problem solving capabilities. Well, it looks like they are putting their brains to use. It was discovered in a recent study that crows hold grudges. They can remember the faces of people who captured them and will still be mad about it up to two years later. Another interesting fact about that is that they will even pass on these feelings to their friends and family members and encourage them to attack specific people as well. So I think it's in the best interest of all of us to not go out and antagonize any crows. Number 5. The Platypus If you grew up watching Phineas and Ferb, then you're probably familiar with the mammal known as a platypus. But you're probably not familiar with just how strange and unique these duck beavers 
actually are. When looking at pictures, you might notice that a platypus is not actually turquoise like Perry, but is actually just brown. Well, if you put a platypus under an ultraviolet light, it will actually grow a blue green color. But unfortunately, a cool hat doesn't immediately appear as well. They are probably best known for being one of only a handful of mammals that lay eggs, and for having a powerful, deadly venom on their back legs. One other thing that you may not have known about these guys is that they give sharks a run for their money. And no, not in fighting each other, but I would pay to see that. Instead, it's in the way that they hunt. Even though they're mammals, they mostly hunt underwater, and they close off all their senses while they do so, only using their electrical signals and powers of electrosensitivity in order to find their prey. Number 4. The Argentine Ant If you think it's cool that you have friends all across the globe thanks to the internet, just wait until you hear about the massive global colony of the Argentine Ant. They have managed to spread to every country except Antarctica and exist in massive underground colonies, even holding the record for largest known ant colony in the world, spanning across 6,000 kilometers. These invasive species have become a massive problem across the world as they appear to have been waging wars with different species of ants, taking over their ecosystems faster than you can say colonization. Due to the super colonies that these ants are capable of creating, they have strength in numbers. Numbers, and their population just seems to be continuing to grow. When Argentine ants from the main large colonies were pitted against each other to see if they would fight, they actually seemed to recognize each other and engaged in a greeting. So let's just hope they're not planning on banding together and taking over Earth anytime soon. Number 3. Cows I know, I know, everybody has seen a cow before, so what's so weird about it? Well, cows do in fact have one large mystery amongst them that scientists are struggling to figure out. If you've ever driven past a cow field and seen that all the cows seem to be facing in the same direction, there's a reason for that. It looks to some researchers that cows are magnetic. They seem to prefer to stand and graze in accordance to electromagnetic fields, always seeming to stand in a north or south direction. Researchers took satellite pictures of tons of cows in pastures and noticed the similarities in the way that they all seem to align themselves. They also ruled out any other reasons for the cows standing in such a way, such as avoiding the heat, wind, or other elements. I would also choose to argue that aliens put magnets in the cows in order to more easily lift them up into their UFOs. But hey, that's just my theory. Number 2. The Greenland Shark There are tons of different species of sharks out there, and one of the apparently more abnormal and unique ones is the Greenland Shark. They're a fairly new find, only first being photographed in 1995, and as a result we really don't know much about them and have had some trouble explaining some of their behaviors. They can become the size of a great white, able to grow more than 20 feet long and weigh more than 2,500 pounds. They also seem to live a very long time, with the current estimate of their lifespan being around 400 years, and only seeming to reach maturity at the age of around 150. As they live in deep waters, they are often mostly blind and rely on their other senses, which is lucky for them as they can often fall victim to a parasite in their eyes, rendering the organs pretty useless. Their skin is also poisonous and can only be eaten after properly preparing it for months, a process which includes burying the meat in the ground. Round, though I'm not sure why you'd want to go to such long lengths for a bite of shark anyways. Number 1. The Axolotl Probably one of the cutest creatures on this list, we're finishing it off with the axolotl. Fans of Minecraft are probably familiar with this little guy. The creature has many strange abilities which have left many people baffled. One of the most notable is probably its ability to completely regenerate lost limbs, as well as its heart, lungs, spinal cord, and even parts of its brain, and the tissue is regrown without even leaving any scarring behind. Scientists are also especially interested in this creature because they are incredibly resistant to cancer, and they're hoping to find a way to harness the axolotl's natural defense to the disease. They are only able to be found in Mexico, and despite having no major predators, are incredibly endangered, mostly having issues with other creatures eating up their resources. And the reason these guys are so cute is because they have a condition that allows them to keep most of their larval features, which causes them to look pretty similar to big tadpoles. In our number 10 spot today, we have the angler fish. In case you're thinking, hey, this fish looks familiar. Well, that's probably because this is the fish from Finding Nemo that almost ate Marlin and Dory after Dory sang her infamous ballad, 
just keep swimming. Gosh, now that I've been reminded of it, you better believe that I'm gonna be singing it all night long. This aquatic fish can be found in some of the darkest spots of the ocean. The angler fish has an organ attached to the front of its head. Yes, that's right, an organ. This organ is called an esca. The esca is able to emit light due to a special form of bacteria called bioluminescence. The esca organ is actually the reason that the angler fish is able to live in the ocean about 3,300 feet, which is 583 feet more than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. There is supposed to be over 200 species of the anglerfish. That's 200 too many if you ask me. Next up in our number 9 spot today we have the Goblin Shark. Named because it looks just like the mythical creatures and perhaps just like the HP Gringotts bank employees but in fish form, the Goblin Shark has been swimming in the deepest parts of the sea for over 100 million years, most known to be found near Japan. The Goblin Shark has a long snout, which is a kind of antenna, which makes it capable of sensing the minute electric fields being sent out by prey nearby. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh up to 460 pounds. Wow. Their fang-like teeth allows them to snap up their prey and devour it. At this point, scientists don't know too much about their behavior, however they have concluded that they live a pretty solitary life. Next up in our number 8 spot we have the Harp Sponge, also known as the Chondrocladia lira. I have to say, this sea creature is actually so satisfying to look at for some reason. Anyone else get me? It literally looks like a harp, which makes it so hard to believe that it is a living creature. This sponge-like creature is actually known for its carnivorous appetite. It actually has velcro-like hooks on the external part of its body, and they trap copepods and other small crustaceans. They then break down its prey until it's able to be absorbed through its pores. So it sucks you in with its velcro-like body parts and proceeds to eat you. In our seventh spot today, we have the vampire squid. Yes, a real underwater vampire. Despite its name, the vampire squid is actually neither a squid nor an octopus. Scientists have separated it into its own group, even though it is quite similar with eight arms and two tentacles. The vampire squid can grow to around 12 inches in length. Its body varies from completely jet black to red. Its name comes from its dark color, and its skin kind of resembles a cape as its skin is connected to its arms. Fun fact, if one of its arms were to be removed by, say, a predator, then it can regenerate and grow back. That's pretty cool. Coming up in our sixth spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Okay, not going to lie, this fish looks like it's from another planet, let alone a parallel universe. It basically looks like it had a run-in with the company that makes those glow-in-the-dark bracelets. And my inner 90s baby is super happy to see this. Do kids these days still use glow-in-the-dark bracelets? Please let me know in the comment section below. The barrel eye fish is a deep sea fish, also known as a spook fish, and it got its name because it has barrel shaped eyes with green lenses. They are known to have large fins, and they're also known to have a transparent head that fills with fluid. Before 2009, scientists actually believed that they could only look up, but they have since observed that the fish can rotate its eyes forward when it's eating. That's pretty cool. The barrel eye fish is usually seen looking like it's lying down motionless. According to researchers, their transparent heads and green pigmented eyes help in filtering out the sunlight reaching their deep sea habitat. They have also been found to be in the North Pacific waters and near Baja, California and Japan. In our fifth spot today, we have the Flapjack Octopus. Gosh, why is it named this? Now I'm going to have to eat pancakes after this video. As delicious as its name sounds, its look instantly makes you say, better not. In fact, it looks more like a cute Pokemon, if anything, so I'm going to choose to believe that it's really a creature from my universe where Pokemon really exist and it's somehow gotten to our universe through some underwater portal. The Flapjack Octopus is a part of the Umbrella Octopus family known for their umbrella-like appearance during any kind of movement. It lives between 500 to 1,500 meters below the sea. They are mostly found in the eastern Pacific Ocean with some sightings in the mid-Atlantic Ocean. They don't have a long lifespan, usually living for 1.5 to 2.5 years. The flapjack octopus eats prawns, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, crabs, to name a few. When it's ready to hunt, 
It flattens out its body in order to appear less threatening. The flapjack is another creature found in Finding Nemo, one of Nemo's, you know, class friends named Pearl. In our fourth spot today, we have the Dumbo octopus. As you can probably guess, its nickname came from the fact that its ears are as cute as the famous Disney character Dumbo. The Dumbo octopus, like the flapjack, is another umbrella octopus, and it can live down to the depths of 13,100 feet, and some scientists speculate even deeper. They are inkless, unlike a lot of their cousins, and they move by slowly flapping their ears, and they use their arms to steer. Fun fact about female Dumbo octopuses, they can actually store sperm for long periods of time after mating with a male. This is to their advantage, of course, because they can then transfer sperm to the most developed eggs when it is the right time for reproducing. No comment, <laughs> but that sounds great. <laughs> they eat pelagic invertebrates that swim above the seafloor, and as such, they spend much of their lives suspended above the seafloor. In our third spot today, we have gulper eels. The gulper eel is quite terrifying to look at, and it is definitely the kind of fish that makes me slightly terrified to go swimming in the ocean. But I don't have to worry because they are in the deep sea. I only have to worry about, you know, sharks, stingrays, and stepping on a jellyfish. The gulper eel has a very distinctive trait. It has a very large mouth, and it tends to snap at its prey, similar to a snake. Its large large mouth and its ability to open wide allows it to eat creatures you would otherwise assume would be too big for it to eat. It has a very skinny body, long and snake-like. They are about two to three feet in length and they live in the deep, deep sea ranging from 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet below the surface. Known to be the fish of your nightmares and of course I don't disagree with this. In our second spot today we have the pelican flounder. This fish is actually found in the western Pacific and Indian oceans. The pelican flounder makes itself as flat as possible to counter the pressure levels of the deep sea. Scientists haven't been able to observe this fish much in its natural habitat, and so therefore nothing much is known. But we do know that the pelican larva, however, looks like it is from another dimension, and it has a very alien-like sort of appearance. The larvae are transparent and become brown as they grow into their adult form. They grow to be about 38 centimeters in length. Save the best till last. In our first spot today, we have the blobfish. Most people say that this is the ugliest fish in the world, but personally, I think the goblin shark is worse. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which fish is uglier? The blobfish, the goblin shark, or let's throw in the angler fish too, because that's another gross one. The blobfish has been described to look like a half-melted human reduced to nothing more than a bubble. That is the perfect description of it. It also kind of reminds me of slime, but living. This fish can be found living in the deep sea of the coast of Australia and New Zealand. It is said to be residing in about 2,000 and 3,900 feet deep. Apparently the only reason it looks like the way that it does is because of depressurization damage done while bringing the animal to the surface. It looks like a fairly normal fish though at the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish has an extremely long lifespan of 130 years. It weighs about 20 pounds and it's about 12 inches long. They have no teeth, no skeleton, and they don't spend much energy moving around. So basically their name is quite fitting. Kicking off the list at number 10, sea pigs. This list gets creepy and or crawly, but first we gotta ease into the Arctic Ocean. We gotta start off this haunting list with the sea pig. Look at this little guy, okay, the pug of the ocean. He looks like a stress ball with feelings. What's going on with him? They look like something that would be microscopic, but really they're six inches long wide, around, big, I don't know, they're pretty large. They stick together, and I mean that in a literal sense. Sea pigs will travel in large gatherings. They live in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, so they're hard to find, really. Their mating routine is also still a mystery. We have no idea how they do it. And just by looking at them, we're like, no guesses, certainly no guesses from me. All we know is that they travel in groups, so. I don't know. Sounds like it's a good time, at least. Lifespan and mating life, total mystery. All we know is that they eat decaying matter on the ocean floor. Kudos to the crew over at Ambari. The footage they find of these deep sea creatures is always fascinating. It's always so otherworldly over at Ambari. Are you guys hiring? I'm afraid of the ocean, but you know, I'll do some behind the scenes stuff, who knows. I'll just edit the weird fish. I'll put the text in. 
Like, what the f is this? Ooh. Number nine, rock bottom. A little over a year ago, scientists camped out in the middle of the Filchner Ron ice shelf for nearly three months. Why? All in the name of science. Yeah, we're getting cold. Geologist James Smith from the British Antarctic Survey slept in a tent. Who does this? Why do you choose to do this? James Smith, apparently. Here we go. He flew five hours out to this ice shelf. Him and his team had to melt 20 tons of snow in order to pour hot water through this ice shelf for 30 hours straight. When the team lowered their gear down through this 3,000 feet of ice, they couldn't get a sample of sediment from the ocean floor because they hit a boulder. I mean, the odds here alone, I mean, the entire sea floor is basically flat and they end up hitting this thing. At first they were frustrated, but this boulder that is 160 miles away from daylight is home to microbial malts, these alien-like sponges. These cylindrical sponges, possibly hydroids. I love seeing scientists get jazzed about stuff. They're like, oh, this rock had absolutely no business being here. Like, guy, you just melted through ice for 20 hours in the middle of Antarctica. I, I feel like it's the other way around. Imagine if those sea sponges could talk. They're like, oh, of all the spots, really? Please close that. The first shred of light, and it's just a big GoPro coming at them. They're like, what is that? Number eight, emperor penguins. They're as glorious as their name hints towards. I remember watching Happy Feet a lot growing up. I was really into penguins and tap dancing for a hot minute there. That movie changed the game. The main penguins here, they're all emperor penguins. Robin Williams' character, Lovelace, he's a rock hopper penguin with the cool, you know, the fluffy eyebrows. The other guys are all emperor penguins. The colorful orange necks, the OG characters, they're all beautiful. They're the largest penguins on the planet and their breeding habits set them aside from the rest. Once the female lays an egg, I'm not gonna do sound effects for this whole process. I don't know why I did that. That's <laughs> so stupid. Once the female lays an egg, she'll leave it with her mate for an incubation period, but she'll walk over 50 miles to the ocean just to get food. The mate has to fast for around 100 days just waiting for his next meal. Once in the water, these emperor penguins really go for it. They soar. They can dive up to 2,000 feet, which is far deeper than any bird in the animal kingdom. And they can hold their breath for around 20 minutes, which is incredible. The longest I've gotten is three minutes, but I'm coming for you, Mumbles. Number seven, chin strap penguins. Okay, from happy feet to slappy feet. Chinstrap penguins are the most aggressive of the penguin family. They're crazy. These guys are nuts. They're tiny. They have to be aggressive. I mean, look at them. They only grow up to 30 inches in length. They're so tiny, but again, they're so aggressive. They only grow up to 30 inches in length, so they have to be, you know? These ones don't tap dance. They actually crump battle you. Yeah, they embarrass you in front of you and your kin. Chin straps are small and quick because their diet requires them to be. With krill wading 50 miles offshore, chin strap penguins have quite the commute. Their thick skin is also quite literal. Their blubber keeps them warm during these long commutes. As long as no leopard seals show up, their commute is pretty smooth sailing. Number six, the sea spider. Okay, we had a few ha-has with the penguins. Now it's time to get weird. Now we know why we're here. The sea spider, thankfully, is not an actual spider. It just looks like one, kind of like daddy long legs. This is a daddy cold legs. It's a marine anthropod, and the reason it's so haunting to look at is because of polar gigantism. Many species have this. Their climate being so harsh, lack of nutrients, lack of sunlight, light, friends, family, etc. Scientists believe it's because sea spiders have slowed down their metabolism, so much so they require a small amount of oxygen to survive. So over time, the oxygen around these sea spiders turn them into like Captain America. They just juice them up. They take on way more than they're adapted to. And in turn, we get giant terrifying sea bugs. Nice. Number five, scale worms. Upon first glance, again, scale worms look microscopic. They look like tiny bacteria that are covered in scales. Hairy, weird, gross scales. They're pretty horrifying to look at. These guys are actually eight inches long on average, so they're not tiny at all. This is what they really look like. The Antarctic scale worm is covered with elytra, these natural bristles. But the most distracting feature here has to be its mouth, head, mouth thing, yeah. This part on its mouth can literally fully retract. It can go inside out, yeah. It can suck its own mouth inside of its body, and then when it's time to eat, it pops out and then claws its prey to pieces. Horrible. I saw a video of it, I almost threw up. We went from happy feet to retractable mandibles. Cheers, that's how we do it here on MA. Number four, glass sponges. Antarctic glass sponges. They don't get their name because they're translucent, they get their name because their skeletons contains silica, which is a literal component of glass. How neat is that? Back in 2013, a massive discovery took place. Scientists figured out how these glass sponges grow in size. Well, they figured out that they do grow in general. As our ice shelves slowly disappear, the numbers of glass sponge sightings they increase. They don't hunt down prey at all, obviously. They spend their entire life quite still, just eating the leftovers that happen to drift along their merry way. Their food was so sparse as well, for a long time it was fully believed they couldn't possibly grow. Because what would they possibly eat? The more we learn about glass sponges, the better, because these little guys tell us a lot about climate change. We're like, how is it happening? What's going on? 
Nothing's happening. We're, they don't talk much. They're really quiet. They don't have mouths or eyes. Number three, the springtail. Also known as the elephants of Antarctica, springtails are hexapods. They're exclusively land animals. Whereas penguins, they sometimes, you know, bop and swim. These guys are only on land. They're tiny as well. They measure up to about a millimeter on average. They look like earwigs almost. Ice earwigs that eat bacteria. Horrible. They got a big old butt too, so you're probably gonna notice if you see one walking by. They live on average one to two years, and they produce glycerol, which helps them, you know, not freeze to death. That always helps. Antarctic springtails live longer than springtails in other parts of the world because the frigid temperatures, again, slows their metabolism down so much they can just survive off basically nothing. They're not immortal, but as far as ice insects go, they're, they're close. They're pretty mighty. Small but mighty. Number two, the hoff crab. When these creatures get their names, it's often in relation to their appearance or their super ability. The immortal jellyfish ages in reverse. The glass octopus is otherwise see-through. The hoff crab gets its name because it looks hairy, like David Hasselhoff. He's hairy as well. Yeah, David Hasselhoff just tweeted the Hoff Crab with this photo. So random. Imagine following him and you see this. You're like, what's going on? Why? We love it. The scientific name later given was Kiwa Tyleri, appropriately named after its discoverer, Paul Tyler, from Southampton University. Found in the East Scotia Ridge on the Southern Ocean, where the water is too cold for the Hoff Crab, these guys are just covered in bacteria, hence their hairy Hoff look. Because it spends so much time staying warm near hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. The guy literally just sits around a deep sea campfire just collecting ice cold bacteria. What a, what a wild life. He's a deep sea hairy caveman, essentially. When it comes time to eat, the hoff crab just scrapes off a little bit of bacteria from any part and then just gives himself more food. He gives himself a little haircut salad. We love those. And finally coming in at number one, the colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid. Those are similar but smaller. Still terrifying but more petite. As its name gives away, the colossal squid is much larger. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica, and these squids, on average, they're around 46 feet in length, with the females being the largest of the species. The biggest and baddest, of course. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it does grab, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to, you know, seven foot long Patagonian toothfish, not a goldfish. They're colossal, and they try and fight whales sometimes. They're crazy. They have no regard for the size of others. They're going to fight anything and everyone. They're more often than not marked up, suggesting they've been in a few deep sea tussles. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being recent in 2014. Some believe this is the closest living relative to the Kraken. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Sound off below. Either way, I'm going to go throw up. I never want to see any of these in real life. Awesome. Awesome.